afraid as yet. I'm, I'm unable to ascertain what's causing her distress. Right. What have you done? It's not real, Haley. And all not, not in the real sense of the word real, that is. What? As pertaining to reality as we know it. What are you talking about? She more pertains to the domain of virtual reality. Virtual what? Virtual baby. Oh, now just calm down one second. I discovered them on the internet when I was doing some research. No stone unturned, Haley. Yes, there's more to that internet than I've given credit. They're made largely to, to put uh, potential teenagers off of unwanted pregnancies. Show them how hard the reality is, rather than the fantasy. It's electronic, you see. She cries out and you have to ascertain what it is that she wants. The feeding, changing, cuddling, everything really. Once you've switched her on, can't switch her off for seven days. Look at you, you can't wait, can you? Oh, I think I could have done. So they say that this is my big present. No, I couldn't wrap the up, that's outside on top of the car. Karen, we agreed we weren't going to have a big Christmas this year. We're saving every penny to this wedding of the century. A toothbrush, Steve. It's supposed to put a smile on your face. Well, it doesn't. Because I said nothing useful. Because useful presents aren't presents because you have to have them so they don't even count. Well, there you go, you see, because, um, that's not useful. It doesn't even work. Why? Two reasons. One, I forgot the batteries, and two, it's not actually a toothbrush. It's an ornament you put on top of the mantelpiece. They're very sore after those. Everybody's going to want one. Not even funny, Steve. Do you know, I've spent time and thought into making this Christmas special for you. I've spent weeks wrapping these presents. Here. You are flipping joking! Karen, Father Christmas doesn't take this amount of presents to the orphanage. Have you gone raving mad? Karen, what is it going to take to get through to you? We are saving every penny for this wedding. And you're just flittering it all away. You're making it out like I've spent it on myself, Steve, and I haven't. They're not for me, they're for you. To make it a Christmas you'll never forget. Oh, yeah, and I won't do that, will I? Because being bankrupt stays in your mind forever. Take them back. Does the card say anything? Uh, just Merry Christmas, all the best, Peter. You have to be Sherlock Holmes to work out more than that. I'm sure he's all right. When's that daughter of yours going to get up? Oh, it'll probably be New Year's Day before she surfaces. Anyway, let's open the rest of them. Um, can not tell me, Blanche? Let me guess. It's, um, a workbench with accessories. Don't be silly, Ken. It's a tie. Oh, no, you spoiled it. <laughs> Oh, look, it'll go with my tart. Northern gloves. <laughs> Do you think I should wake her? Oh, you're taking your life in your hands there, Mother. Anyway, what's the hurry? Raj, are you going to get dressed at all today? It's nearly dinner time. Oh, well, Raj. Right now, I think she's ready for a feed. You can't give an electronic thingy a bottle of milk. Look, I'm well aware of that, Hayley. Equally, I can hardly plug a real baby into a wall socket. I'm just trying to make it as real as possible. Now, if you'd care to hold baby while I make sure that the milk is the requisite temperature. Firm grip, Haley. Baby needs to feel totally secure. Shh, there, there. What, what's it called? Did you come with a name? Uh, no, no, no. The key question of parental choice. And one which I've contemplated at length. And given our specific set of circumstances, I think we should avoid naming her in case we get too attached. A baby cropper will suffice. And what if she turns out to be a boy? Well, at this stage, I don't think it makes much difference, except in the traditional colour of the outfit. We don't have to conform to that. Ah! Just needs a, a couple of seconds to cool down. Go on, put it on, Elvis. No, I'm not putting that on. Look at it, it might attack me. Oh, go on. Hey. You can do that song about the uh, dead dog. What old shit? Yeah, it always makes me cry. I think it's just the way you sing it. Old shit, what a dog. Yeah, well, you can practice whilst I'm out. Uh, hang about. Where are you going? Well, we've nothing here for Christmas dinner. I thought you went yesterday. Well, that was for another present for you. Oh, so we've got no food then? No. Hmm. 
Perhaps I should have found a relapse and stayed in hospital because they put a great show on there, you know. <sighs> and would you have preferred that? <sighs> no, well, no, actually. Mm. Anyway, I don't think I'm up to a four-course meal. Good, because I'm not up for cooking one. Uh. But I think we should have a, at least a pudding. Yeah, uh, and a bottle of wine. All right. Right, well, I shan't be long. Oh, right. what did the police say when uh, you phoned them? Oh, um, well, well, I didn't really. I was a bit tired. I meant to. Phone them now, Martin. Let's just get it over and done with. It's Christmas Day. Oh, and do they stop hunting down murderers because it's a bank holiday? Your dad is not a murderer, not Katie. Not trying. He saved me life. Last minute panic. Yeah, and he confessed what he'd done. To you, yeah. But that is not good enough, not for me. Not after what he's done. That man thumped you, locked me up, and just to add icing on the cake, he then kept me a man from seeing me. And if that wasn't enough, that... Look, I just want the truth out, Martin. I want the world to know. So phone him for me. OK, right. Christmas, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hey, you've been bright and early. Well, I've been to church, but I really can't face going home yet. Uh, Norris is insisting on cooking traditional fare. He's bought this organic free-range turkey and he spent all last night working out if it would take longer to cook because it's healthy and it's not dehydrated. But when he started on his mother's recipe for stocking... <laughs> I think I need a really large sherry. Oh, level. come in. <laughs> we should never have allowed him to do it. How can you stop him? Well, generally, I lock him in storeroom. I mean, sometimes I let him have a light on, but uh, not generally. <laughs> hey, Alan. Your usual. Thank you. Betty? I, I, I thought you were staying in your gardens. No. Oh, Betty, look, come on, let's get you sat down. So I've got to take all the presents back. Yep, a lot. Even the special ones that I'm wearing. What? I don't want to see them. Well, perhaps we could keep just a few of them. No, Steve. All or nothing. Because that's what they say love's all about. Here you go, love. Oh. I just didn't know where else to go. What's the matter, Betty? I thought you'd gone off to your gardens. Yeah, I did. I went down by bus, but uh, <laughs> when I got there, there was nobody there. I mean, the garage was empty and the neighbours said that they'd just gone off for Christmas. You can't have just forgotten you were coming, love. Well, no. No, of course not. I mean, there was a message on my answer phone when I got back. I must have just missed it. You know, last minute change of plan. Caroline's mother. Oh, some problem, so of course they have to go with her for Christmas. Come on, love, take your coat off. You're spending the day with your friends. Right. There you go. Thank you, love. Yeah. It's it's not just that. I feel such a fool. I mean, what with the fire and all? Fire? Yeah. What, what fire? At home. You've had a fire? Well, it, it could have been my fault, I don't know. It was just so frightening, Sherry. When I woke up, everywhere was full of smoke and the neighbours were pounding on the oh, door. Oh, come on. <laughs> Mum, get us something stronger, love. Oh, oh, come on, Betty. Oh. <sighs> if you've come to give me grief again, Ange, I can't take it. Honest, I've had enough. I've come to see Craig. Where is he? In the bedroom. He must be the only kid in the land who hasn't opened a present yet. Well, it doesn't surprise you, does it? How is he? He's not said a word. Craig, love, it's me. It's your mum. It's Christmas. Come to say Happy Christmas. He won't come out. Shut up, Tommy. Come on, love. Come out and say Happy Christmas. Craig, please, come out. I'm fine now, thanks, love. It's warmed me up a bit. Not that I needed warming up. I mean, quite the opposite. But it's, it's not as bad as it looks, you know. I mean, it's in my living room mainly, just burnt out wedding photos and, and family, you know. I mean, smoke gets everywhere, doesn't it? They, they said that I really couldn't stay there. Well, what exactly happened? Hey, there's no rush, love. Well, 
I'm not sure. I mean, I might have left something switched on. I was, I was up tired by the time I got back. But it could have been the electric fire. Mm. It doesn't matter. What matters is you're here and you're safe and sound and you can stay as long as you like. Oh. Do you think I ought to tell our Gordon? Leave that to me. He won't like it. He can bet on that. Oh, Brenda. Oh, you, you shouldn't have. We can't really accept this, can we, Todd? No, no, of course not. Look, thank you, but it's, it's really too expensive. Oh, it's only out of my Christmas club savings. I hardly notice the monthly payments. I get more out of giving than receiving. That's what Christmas is for me. And who else do I have to give to except your little family? It's really naughty. But? Well, thank you, Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you really want to thank me, would you come round to mine for Christmas dinner? I've got a great big box of crackers. I can't pull them on my own. Oh, I'm really sorry, Brenda. We can't. My mum's asked us special and first time in a long while the whole family will be together. We can't really get out of it. Yeah, of course. I, I should have spoken up sooner. <laughs> It's always been my problem. Yeah, hello. Is um, Detective Sergeant Ripley there at all? Oh, he is? Oh, no, no, I, I just thought with it being Christmas that it wouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would like to speak to him. Yeah, it's Martin Platt. Thank you. Yeah, Detective? Uh, yeah, Merry Christmas. Yeah, I just thought you'd like to know. Of, um... I've remembered what happened. Listen, love. What you were trying to do... OK, there's no getting round it. It were really... What could have happened, don't bear thinking about. But you're doing your best to make up for it, and that's what you've got to hold on to. We all do daft stuff sometimes. But there's no point in hiding yourself away. At the end of the day, nobody were really harmed. You and your dad made sure of that. And now your dad's doing his best to make amends for his part in it. You didn't have a part in it. I did, Paul. And I'm going to take the responsibility. Come on out, love. Please. Life goes on. I'm cooking Christmas dinner for both of you. Well, didn't fancy cooking just for one. And I've got a pile of spuds. Can't let them go to waste. Mum. Oh. Now listen, you. I don't want you to worry, because whatever happens, we'll handle it now. We're going to sort everything out, because that's what you've got a mum and a dad for. Yeah? Well, I've always thought Gordon was rather spineless, and his wife just walks all over him. Well, he's well and truly gutted now. What did he say? Well, he stammered a lot, but then again, I didn't give him a lot of space. I had a lot to get off my chest myself. Can I pop back and have a word with her? Yeah, of course you can. Thanks, so. Oh, there you are, ladies. Oh, just excuse me, love. Uh, well, we're well on the way. Uh, to be precise, two hours, 43 minutes. I, I won't bother with the seconds. You got an egg timer there, Norris? Oh, no, 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 no. He's bought himself a Christmas present. It's not for me, Henry. No, I'm not the sort of person who goes around treating himself for Christmas. No, no, it's simply a device to make me more effective in my efforts to serve the wider community. I, I mean, would you like to know what the weather's like in Canada? No. Well, if and when you do, it's all here, you see. Calculator, 
diary, so I don't miss any important functions, a dress book, oh, 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 and timer. Now, I set the timer at the self same moment I switch the oven on, and the first alarm is to alert me to start the basting. And is that an important function, Norris? Oh, yes. Yes, you may mock, Emily, but when you're savouring my stuffing, you'll be laughing on the other side of your face. Just a small heart for me, I think, Natalie. Right. I don't know why we had to come in here first. Let's just got the six packs lined up. The fridge is bursting. Hansel has already started on the snowballs. Yeah, well, I need some Dutch courage. Oh, come on, Fizz. It's Christmas dinner with all the trimmings. It's not like you're going into battle. Oh, am I not? Kurt, you don't know me, ma'am. She'll pull some stun. I am only going there for our chestnut. Can't wait to see his face when he sees me present. <laughs> You've got her all wrong, you know. She said the nicest things about you this morning. Like what? Well, uh, I can't repeat it, really. It was funny. But, but in a kind way, you know. Oh, give me an instance. I'm not very good with jokes, but it showed how dead keen she was on you coming. Oh, I bet. Kurt, just get me another drink. Oh, oh sorry, I, I, I didn't think. Yeah. Oh, jeez. What are you doing, mate? Shivering. Why is that then? Because I've got a 7 4 scale blowing through my back door. Got this big, stupid fridge with no food in it, and I'm freezing. You can have Christmas dinner with us. Yeah? Yeah. Except it's a family Christmas, really. And you're not family. Not really. Very nice, Deirdre. Have you kept the receipt? It's in the bag. Oh, at long last. Merry Christmas. I've been waiting all morning for you to open your presents. No, what's the point? It's only going to be bath salts and moisturisers. That's what you think, my girl. Now, you go and get yourself dressed in your Sunday best. We're going on a mystery tour for yours. What? Go on. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Uh, back in that bed this instant, Steve McDonald, because I've got more Christmas presents for you. Esther, uh, give me five minutes. I'm uh, getting a bit overexcited. No, no, Steve, I can't wait five minutes. Well, give us a break, will you? Let's put the kettle on. Uh, I've uh, got to check my messages. Eileen said she'd give us a ring if there was any problems. Steve, you said no work. Don't start. Just give us a few minutes. There's enough time to uh, get your present wrapped again. Mm, don't be long. Oh, go on, what? Trouble at Mel? No, it's my mum. Wishing us a happy Christmas. That's nice. Yeah. A bit weird, though. She uh, says she misses us and uh, wishes we could all be together. Only um, she understands we'd already booked our Christmas holiday. And I wonder where she got that from. But dream on, Kieran. All our cabs are booked up forever. I'm only here bringing the bad news to them that phone in. Waste of time, really, only I'm getting paid double. But we're supposed to be at Dev's by now. Oh. Dinner with the boss man, eh? Hmm? Well, I'm afraid there's now I can do, short of lending you a couple of skateboards that my lads used to play on. We could walk. It's miles. It's not that far. They'd find us dead huddled together in the snow somewhere. It's not snowing, Kieran. Maybe not now, but who's to tell what might happen later? Oh, he doesn't want to go. Neither do I. And if the truth be known, Dev doesn't want us there either. And that Maya's not really keen. So, let me ask you a little question. Why are you going? What a very good question that is. I'm a mind but never make it that far. Oh, I didn't want to mention it, ruin your Christmas. Well, why don't I phone him and cover for you? How would you do that? Well, tell him you're snowed in. I mean, well, don't fret it. By the sounds of it, he'll jump at any excuse. Wonderful woman you are, Eileen. Right yes, you are. Oh, well, glad I've made someone's Christmas. <laughs> Street cars? No. No! No chance. Excuse me, please. Is nobody gonna get that? Nick? And nobody start anything, okay? Well, I don't know why you're looking at me. I wasn't looking at anybody in particular. Good, because I don't know what you're talking about. Merry Christmas. Mm. Hello, Beth, me sweetheart. How are you, eh? Is your mummy looking after you? She's been fine, thank you. <laughs> and what did Father Christmas bring you? Hey, did you think we'd forgotten you? 
And is it make Christmas or birthday for us? It's a combined. That's well tight. Everyone's been saying that. Oh, listen to him. You can hardly find him for presents. <laughs> are you going to take your coat off, Todd, or are you not stopping? Well, I hope so. It's a pity. I know, I know it's a daft thing my grandmother used to say to me. It didn't make any sense, but then us grandmothers aren't supposed to make any sense, are we? You say one more word about Todd and I swear... What's the point in saying it, Sarah? Coat. You're not interested in facing the truth. I mean, I don't know what you're making a big song and dance about it for. What do you expect me to do? She's on the phone all modelling. Can I come for Christmas? No! What do you expect me to say? It's the first thing that popped into my head. Oh, well, naturally. It would be for Karen McDonald. Anybody else would have thought, oh, my bloke's mother. Lonely at Christmas, nowhere to go. And it's a season of goodwill to all men, including mother-in-laws. She's not my mother-in-law, not yet. And she won't be the way you're carrying on. Oh, come on, Steve, are you going to let her ruin our Christmas? Oh, is that what she's done? Oh, I'm sorry, I hadn't realised. My mother phones through a nice Christmas message, not whining, not complaining, but somehow manages to ruin your Christmas. Well, of course you're right. That's terrible, appalling behaviour. We should have the old bag put down, eh? Don't be daft, Steve. I mean, you don't want to hear any more than I do. That's not the point. What is the point then, Steve? Because I am failing to understand it. All I've done... The point is, it's Karen Scrooge MacDonald put paid to Christmas, not my mother. Oh, she's really got you wrapped round her little finger, hasn't she? Is there anybody else in your world apart from Karen MacDonald? Where are you going? I'm giving you your present. A chance to see how a lonely Christmas feels. <sighs> Christmas Day, and I couldn't find a pudding for love and money. So I've had to settle for some soup instead. Right, what do the police say? Look at me round. What are you doing? I'm going visiting. You shouldn't even be out of bed. Yeah, well, things to do, places to go, people to see. Well, and am I invited? Well, no, that's just the point. We're not, are we? What's the game, Martin? There's no game. I'm going to see your family. Have you gone bonkers? Did they not give you a brain scan? There is no way I'm spending a second of my time with them. All right, I'll go on my own. It's best if you come. Is it far, Grant? Near in one way, but far in another. Now, off we go. It's like living with the Oracle at Delphi. <laughs> well, what have we done wrong now? I think we're already lined up in twos. Well, dear, didn't I, huh? Oh, you should write Christmas crackers. Oh, you're just saying that. Don't wind her up, Ken. Not today. I'll be on my best. Where's she gone? What's going on, Mother? Welcome home, me love. What? It's yours. I bought this house for you. Merry Christmas, Tracy. What do you think? Are you pleased? How much is it worth? Don't you worry your head about that. I've still got a few bob put by to make sure you're set up properly. It won't cost a lot to get this place out. And there's a lovely little nursery already up the stairs to Bedfordshire. I'm not keeping this baby, Gran, if that's what you're thinking. There's no strings attached. It'll get you straight out from under your mum's feet and give you space and time to really think things through. You've bought this house for Tracy. That's what I said. Sometimes, Mother, you take my breath away. I really don't see what I've done wrong. Somebody's got to help this girl, and who better than her grandmother? Her mother. Her mother. Mothers help their daughters. Mothers. Oh, do they, ma'am? When did you work that one out, eh? Stay out of this, Tracy. Well, they're both talking about me as if I'm some little kid. Oh, what else are you? I don't have to listen to this. Yeah, that's your trouble. You never, never listen. And was that helpful, Deirdre? <laughs> what is your problem? Do you think I've deprived you of your rightful inheritance? Sometimes, Mother, 
I feel you've deprived me most of my life. I mean, where were you when I needed you? You've never taken the remotest bit of interest in what was going on in my life. And now suddenly, absent ma'am turns into super gran. And I'm supposed to say honky-dory. Don't you see? You've just bypassed me with my own daughter. I mean, you and me, we could have sat down, we could have discussed this. But oh no, you had to turn it into some sort of Christmas conjuring trick that just cuts me right out of everything. I need a drink. Oh, she's got a temper on her. You have my sympathy. I can manage without that, thank you. I haven't got many sprouts each. We'll have to make do on roast potatoes, eh? Oh, I hate sprouts. Do you know, nobody's got a good word to say about them. A bit like the Harris's, really, eh? <laughs> yeah, well, we've lived through that before. Dare say we can do it again. I'd get that, would you, Craig? Tom, can you see if there's anything that we can use as napkins, love? Yeah. Will kitchen roll do? Got visitors, Tom. Martin, Katie. What brings you here, love? I'm waiting for Martin to tell me that. Well, look, I thought you ought to know. I've talked to the police. Fair enough. It's more than fair, Dad. You've tried to kill him. Katie. No, no, you leave this to your mum and dad, love. Well, it's not as simple as that, Angela. How do you mean? What's going on? Have you come to gloat? Because if you have, get on with it. Then I can spend a few minutes with my wife and son before the coppers come knocking. Well, actually, Tommy, I've not come to gloat. I've come to thank you. For saving my life. Have you gone mad? He tried to kill you! Well, no, he didn't. Craig did. What are you going on about, trying to drag a lad into yeah, this? Well, he came round to me last night and explained. Not right, son. Craig? Means nothing. Who's going to leave a kid his age? Well, actually, I do. Craig, you... You tried to kill Martin. <gasps> Katie! No! Katie! No, could you listen, will you? What can you possibly say? Look, the police aren't going to believe him, will they? Of course they won't. Well, I think they would. I do. And you're going to ruin his life? I'll tell you what, when he realised what he'd really done, he went out that door trying oh, to stop you getting out of Tommy, Tommy, just listen to me, will you? Look, I've had it up to here. I'm sick to death of people ruining each other's lives. It just goes on and on. And I want no more part of it. Now, if you just listen to me for a second, will you? Martin, you can't. Katie, just calm down. <sighs> Look, the lad only did what he thought was best. He thought he was going to bring his family back together. Not right, Craig. And you never know. Maybe you might have. But your dad's right. The following morning, reality finally got through to you. Yeah, only just in time. Yeah, well, that's the whole point. So you didn't phone the police then? Well, yeah, I did. I did what you asked me to. And who did you blame? I blamed myself. You what? I told him that I knew my brakes were faulty. I'd been working too hard over Christmas to get them mended. And I stayed mum after the accident, so it wouldn't affect the insurance. <laughs> now, I can't say they were too pleased at me giving them the runaround, but hey, meant they could get on for the tea. So, hopefully, that should bring the investigation to a close. Well, anyway, that's it. All done. Why? And you're just going to let them get away with all this? I think we ought to go, come on. No, uh, I want to say what you've done. Thank you. Okay. No, no, please stay. Uh, have you got dinner in? You could have a bite with us. We've got plenty. I don't know. Tommy, Tommy, just ask him to stay. Go on, it's all over and done with now. Please, Tom, just ask him to sit down. Yes, I know it's Christmas Day. Thank you. Yeah, well, that's the whole point. You've got to plan ahead. You can't just expect... I'm not paid to listen to that. 
Have a Christmas drink with me, Arlene. Oh, no, thank you. Look, there's no point in us both being here. Why don't you clear off? What? I'll take over. Look, hang on a minute. I need the double time. And you'll get paid. Oh, right. You got somewhere to go? Don't you worry about me. So, uh, what are you doing here in the doghouse again? No, I'm in the taxi office, and that's exactly where I intend oh. to stay. Right. See you. Sorry. <sighs> We're closed. Merry Christmas. No, forgive me if I sound presumptuous, Kenneth, but I, I do find your argument a trifle flawed. You see, the whole point of an electronic device like this is not to replace thought, but rather it allows me to uh, concentrate my mind on matters far above the mundane. You see, with this I can roam mentally, freely at will. That's a terrifying thought. Oh, I'm not convinced, Norris. I'm not arguing against it as a repository of thought. Oh, I like that, Kenneth. A repository of thought, yes. Oh. My alarm to start the base thing. I'm afraid you'll have to forgive me, Kenneth. Oh, does this mean food at last? Well, you can't rush free range, Henry. I mean, they're hard enough to catch. Hard <laughs> enough to catch. Oh, saved by the bell. <laughs> You're doing better. Oh, I can't sit back there twiddling my thumbs. I thought I'd come and make myself useful. Well, you could get us another round while we wait for the call. Why <laughs> don't you come round on this side, Betty? Oh. Join us. I prefer yeah. to work, love. Hey, could I get another pint, please? Of course you can, love. It's Christmas. Hey. There's no point sulking in here, Deirdre. Not unless you want the turkey burnt any more than usual. If you want a turkey, you can cook it yourself. Or better still, why don't you go and eat it in Tracy's new house? Because you're certainly not ruining my Christmas any more than you already have. What are you doing? We're just about to get sat down. Do you think for one second that I'm going to sit down and eat with her? Well, she's done the full worst with all the trimmings. Didn't you just see what she just did? She was just a bit carried away. Carried away? She should be carried out feet first. You can't say that. She's your mum. She has just had the bare-faced cheek to pass my present to Chesney off as her own without even a buy you leave, and then she expects I'm just going to sit there and say nothing. Well, you didn't. Yeah, well, how could I in front of him? That's what she was banking on. She forgot to buy him something. She's had a lot on her mind. She had all the potatoes to do. All my life that cow's been playing these tricks on me. She'd have cheated me out of my pocket money if she'd have given me any. Oh, come on. You've got to try and understand. She hasn't had the easiest of lives. Sorry? Well, it can't have been easy on her own bringing you up, can it? Well, not you. I didn't mean you especially. Just any kid. I mean, I'm sure you was absolutely fantastic. But even so, you, you know it can't have been easy. Are you taking her side? I'm not taking no sides. Why not? You're my boyfriend. I'm just trying to make sure everybody gets a dinner. There's a lot of work gone into that. And there's a proper pudding. Yeah, well, you go and get yourself fatted up, Kirk, and I hope it poisons you. You know, knowing her rare attempts at cooking, the odds are pretty good on that. Well, at least she's making the effort. Oh, yeah, like the effort she made to buy presents. Did you see my present from her under the tree? What did you buy her? I'll just clear off Lee Kirk. Don't believe it! What? Are you really gonna go? Are you really gonna go and choose them over me? Well, I don't know what to say. Just calm down. And as she says, try and see her point of view, eh? Come back. I'll try and save you something if you want. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And then the clock goes in there. So where's that one go, Bethany? <laughs> Nearly there. That's right. My first taste of Christmas. Chef Sherry. Yeah. Don't like it, really, but it's tradition, isn't it? Can I have one? Is that wise? Yeah. Um, why don't you save it, eh? Have a glass of wine with your dinner? Very well. Very well. Here's what I've got for you. A cup of tea. Look at that. Ooh, there we go. A 
this bear glass. You know, I never made a big fuss about Christmas. Shall I tell you what the secret is to a perfect Christmas? Avoid the family. Mothers, fathers, brothers, kids. Wives. <laughs> Wives, past, present and future. Doesn't matter what you do, it'll never work out. And that extends to husbands as well. You ever have a good one with yours? Yeah, after the divorce. My point entirely. But that's steady on. We don't want to turn that little bundle of yours into a dip so, do we? Yeah, well, it's going to have to lump it for once. Oh, it's you that's got to lump it. And don't I know it. Well, here's looking at you, kid. So, this little lump of yours, do we know what it is? A boy or a girl? It's a surprise. Look, Trace, I'm sorry, but I just don't get it. I mean, you're all up for having this kid, yeah? That's right, yeah. And then you're just going to give it to the croppers. Now, don't get me wrong, they are very nice people, but they are absolutely barking mad. I wouldn't let them take my kid across the street. Wouldn't you? No, I flip him, wouldn't. Does that not bother you? Oh, I'm sorry, Tracy. It's none of my business. No, no, fine. It's fine, really. Look, Steve, I really want to talk about this. Well, I'm all ears, if that's any use. I'm just glad to be of service. Do you fancy having kids, Steve? I think Karen's very interesting. No, I mean you. Well, I reckon every bloke wants a son and heir, don't they? What about a little girl? Yeah, I could do that. They say the girl's a lot stronger towards the dad than she is to the mum. I don't know how true that is. I reckon that's what Roy's dreaming on, a little girl to run into his arms when he comes round the counter. But what happens if the kid's not his? Come again? What happens if it's somebody else's? Well, it's just one of these hypothetical questions. It's not Roy's baby. What? It's not Roy's. Flipping heck, does Roy know? Hang on a minute, are you saying that this is another bloke's baby? Yeah. Does he know? No. Why not? Because I don't think that he's going to be interested. Oh, come on, Tracy, you don't know that. Give him a chance. Some blokes don't even think about these things until it happens. They can... Well, they can change, you know? Right, so you think that I should tell him? Absolutely. No, you're right, yeah, thanks. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's your baby. What? The baby's yours. This is Tracy, some joke you just pulled out of a cracker. It's no joke. So what do you think, Steve? What's the matter? Hey, baby. Look, uh, I'm really sorry about before. Do you think we cook for a drink? Forgive and forget. I mean, it is Christmas. What are you doing? What are you doing? On my way home. You had any dinner? Nope. No, neither have I. So what's happened? Fell out with everybody. Alright. I feel like getting smashed. Hey, well, I've got some cans. How many? Three six packs. Might be enough. Come on then. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I told everything back to normal. What do you mean? I don't know, work. Yeah, yeah, good. Good, thanks. That's nice. <laughs> so, how are things, my darling? No, don't cry, ma'am. What's crying about that? I mean, that's a perfectly normal question. You know what I mean? Just let it oh, be. Oh, okay. dear, come on, what are you going on about? It's getting like I can't open my mouth. I mean, that was very civil, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. Good. Not being sick, then? Oh, now that is crying. Yeah, I know, I know. We can't go on pussyfooting around, can we? I'm going to go mad. 
I mean, everything's not fine. That's the whole point. We can't escape that. Mum, leave it alone. Oh, yeah. thank you, Nick. That's just the advice she was giving to me. I need to know. I can't go on day by day trying to guess. Guess what? Are you having this child or not? Oh, here we go. Is it yes or no? That's all I'm asking. Yeah, but it's not, though, is it? What do you mean? Mum, I know you. If I say yes, you've got all these words stacked up. You just can't leave it, can you? Is it yes or no? Yes. Me and Todd are having this child. Is that it? Are we all settled now? Can we just sit down and eat? Yes, let's. Come on, come on. Sarah. Mum. You mustn't do this. I can't just stand by for the next few months watching you for the second time in four years, just watching you ruin your life. Well, I've got one way we can solve that problem. What? Sarah, don't get us. Just don't look at me. I wasn't meaning that. Because I can't bear the way you look at me anyway. It's as though I failed you in some way. And I don't want it. It's too big a price to pay for a bite to eat. You know, this is my life, and if you can't accept it, that's your problem. Come on, Todd. No, come on, sweetheart. Come and eat your dinner. No, we've got people more than willing to feed us for none of the price. Sit down. Don't order me. I'm not ordering you. I know. I know. Right, first round's on me. Baby, I'm sorry. Are we all right? Yeah, fine. So, uh, what have we got here in top? Well, I couldn't leave her on her own. Have we got to buy her a drink? Yeah, it's Christmas. Yeah, well, she's working. She's got to put her all in her pocket. So what do you want, Trace? My treat. Get what you want. I'll have an orange juice. Me and Steve will find somewhere to sit. Do the Christmas miracles never cease? No. Uh, two pints, shall I'm sorry, Tracy, but I'm just not buying it. This is a flipping lineup. There's no way that's mine. The date's tally. With what? One night, because that's all it was. Didn't you do biology at school, Steve? All right, all right. It could be mine, but it could also be Roy's. You can't be sure. Yes, I can. How can you? Dead simple. I never slept with Roy. And I'm telling you, Steve, there's no one else in the frame. Oh, look, it's my lovely boss. You know, I thought I wasn't going to get my Christmas bonus. Come here, you. <laughs> Oi, get off him. I'll break your legs. Oh, do you know, I'd hate that because, well, my legs are my fortune. I mean, I do have them insured for half a pint of lager and a packet of pork scratchings. <laughs> Why are you telling me this? I wasn't going to. But you said yourself, give the bloke a chance. No, well, I wasn't talking about me, was I? Yeah, well, we all know. So what do you think, Steve? Cheers, Shell. Steve, can I have a hand? How do you do it, Tracy? Do what? Always land on your feet. I don't know, it's the reward of living a good life. Oh, really? Oh, come off it, Mother. What was I supposed to say? I didn't ask Grant to spend the family fortune buying me an house. No, I didn't see you actually turning it down either, though. It's a Christmas present, ma'am. That's what I've been brought up to say. Thank you. It's just what I've always wanted. What is it, Tracy? Give up the pair of you. Stop making such a fuss. It's a tiny terrace. You're going on like it's Buckingham Palace. You never, never. You're making it up. <laughs> I swear it. Every year I used to knit me own Christmas presents. <laughs> my mum was always so out of it. She went on own Christmas Day from August bank holiday. I even used to wrap up all my own presents and send them from aunts and uncles that I've made up. Uh, and where did you get the wrapping paper from? Oh, I knit that as well. That's what I got knit for. <laughs> oh, you daft beggar. Oh, did your mum not bother with you? Oh, come here. <laughs> right, that's something we're not going to talk about ever again. <laughs> talk about what? Right, spot on. I best go. <laughs> oh, oh, come on. What? There's another six pack left. It is Christmas. <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> it's all I could rustle up in time. Humble and honest fare. That's what we make our living from. I feel no sense of shame on account of that. Don't need food, Hayley. Let's get our priorities straight. 
This could go day and night. I'll take the first shift. You take the second. There, there, baby Crocker. Come on. Don't you fret. Your daddy's here. Are you happy, Ray? I can see the future, Haley. And it's looking grand. Don't think. I've uh, got my drink. You owe me one. Look, Tracy, don't get me wrong. What I said about kids, maybe want them one day. Or maybe I do. I know you. Not ever. Not in a million years. Yeah, well, that's what you've got, Steve. Tracy, if you'd have told me the time, I'd have told you to get rid of it. It's not going to work, and I don't want any part of it, OK? Look, I was thinking, right, we could call it Stephen. Or Stephanie, you know, spelt with a Y. Stephanie's nice. Don't be stupid. Look, I'm sorry, but what am I supposed to do, Steve? You said that I couldn't give it to the croppers. That'd be a really wicked thing to do, right? And it's too late to get rid of it, so you said I should tell the person who's responsible. Yeah, well, I'm telling him. And what does he want me to do? Keep mum, stay put, bring the kid up on my own, do anything as long as it doesn't ruin his cosy little love nest. It doesn't matter that you've ruined mine. You what, split me and Karen up? I am talking about what happens to us, not you and her. Oh, I need the Luna, baby. Get another one in. Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, you look as if you'd lost a pound and found a pen. Well, there has been a slight miscalculation. Could the computer chip let you down, all right? Oh, no, no, not the fault of technology in any way, I might add. No, no, the, the time has served its purpose admirably. Uh, uh, the fault was more one of human error. Oh, not yours, surely. I'm not one to shy away from my responsibilities, Kenneth. The, the timer was set perfectly as you witnessed and fulfilled its function. Only, unfortunately, when I set the timer, I forgot to put the oven on. Well, but you put it on over five hours ago. No, for four hours, 52 minutes, to be exact. So it'll be another four hours? Well, no, 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 roughly six. I haven't worked it out yet. Probably uh, enough time to order another sherry. <laughs> so what am I supposed to do? Give it the croppers. Oh, you've changed your tune. It's not my tune, it's the one you've been playing for months and there's nothing wrong with it. Everything is wrong with it and you know that. I'm not leaving, Karen, if that's what all this is about. Karen is just using you to get a big wedding. She doesn't love you. You tell her and I'll kill you. Honey. Uh, listen, about today, I'm sorry. I messed up, and I apologise. It's all right. No, 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 look, I'm serious. From now on, it's going to be me and you as one. As one. Are you drunk? Yeah, yeah, I am a little bit. <laughs> but listen, it's going to be great. Me, you, the future. It's going to be perfect. Next on ITV2. Who's the donkey? Basically, I sat there and denied uh, any knowledge of who it was. Christmas is from hell. Next here, 11 pop idols from four continents compete in World Idol. Then it's Creature Comforts, and later a celebrity who wants to be a millionaire is after the news.